Greetings, citizens, and welcome to our most royal and special Let's Build. Now, I have an announcement to make. Her Majesty and Royal Highness, Queen Elizabeth II, is coming to Yogcraft. That's right, she's paying us a visit and I've been summoned to do my duty for Queen and Country and build her a place to rest during her stay here. Now she's going to want to stay somewhere near to where the action is, so a place between Duncan's Castle, the Sipscoat Compound and Honeydew Inc. seems like the perfect spot. Now I found this nice little abandoned island just off the shore, connected up via a bridge. So it's time to drop my hoe, pick up my stone bricks and get to building her a place fit for a queen. Right, so that's the spiel over with. First things first, I got out my dirt and began to create four concentric shapes you see here to create a kind of like mini hill out above the island. I didn't want to delete the island that was there because, to be honest, I didn't need to. If I put the dirt on top of the sand, you would never know that there was an island here to begin with. Now, once the dirt island was complete, I put down some grass blocks and let that grow in the background. And then it was time to add sand to the side of the islands because without sand, this would look like a very unnatural place to be to put an island. So, and it would look very man-made. And luckily, sand has the property that when you put it down, it falls. So I could come side on to the island and just spam sand at the side, and it would it would automatically fall down to the bottom levels of the ocean, and create naturally occurring sand dunes. And you can see the grass growing really quickly as well while I was putting down this sand. Much faster than I anticipated, actually. I just had to put the final finishing touches to the side of the sandbanks before starting on the castle itself, the place where she was going to stay. Now, first things first, I set down two circles using our old friend, the Minecraft Circles Sheet. And these were circles with a block of four as the center. Now I wanted to have one main circle, which would be the main turret for her castle, the main kind of building, the meat of her tower. And then another circle just connected to it that would be a kind of side tower to give the castle that she's going to stay at a little bit of differentiation, you know, a little bit of differentiation and to make it look a little bit more interesting than just a plain old simple tower. And I coloured those in with different colour wool blocks so you can clearly see which belongs to which circle. And then once those were in place, I began to build up with stone bricks. And once it was a few levels up, I realised that I wanted to build with another layer inside. So this is like a too thick circle. And what that gives me is a bit of freedom, once the cylinder is complete, to dig into the cylinder to make the building itself have a bit more shape and detail. And so from here on out, the main mission was just to climb up slowly with stone bricks three blocks at a time. I want the main tower to be quite tall and the off tower at the side, the side tower, to be about oh, a third of the height of the main tower. And then once I'd gone up quite a way with the main tower, I came around to the side and started to build up the side tower. Now I didn't need to make this too thick because I wasn't going to add that much detail to the side tower. But once I was a few blocks up, I began to build a lip at the bottom of the cylinder to improve the thickness and feel of the turret. Now I wanted this to be, the design for this to be very similar to, if you've played Warcraft 3, the Alliance Guard Towers are very much kind of like standalone turrets. They're also in World of Warcraft. So I wanted that kind of solid base that kind of sprawls out a little bit at the bottom. And then once that base was complete, I used little blocks to make it look a bit stared. add a little bit of a step to it and then I came around to the top of the side tower put down a wooden floor and connected up a little bit of a balcony kind of thing to the doorway that's going to be in the main tower at the second level. I then added simple crenellations that I had to come back to every now and again because I wasn't quite happy with the designs for it but once I had something I liked using stone brick steps I stuck with it and kept that pattern around the side of the uh, around the side of the side tower. Then I came around the side with little blocks and played around a bit with what I wanted from the crenellations underneath the top. And again, this was just to give the detail 
on the walls a little bit more depth and, you know, add a bit more to those. So then I returned to the main tower, came up a little bit taller to make sure it was more than halfway higher than the other one. And then used these stone bricks to augment the crenellations on the side here. Now I wanted these, these crenellations to come out quite a way because the whole shape of this tower is very much hourglassy. And then once I was happy with that, I came around with different coloured wood because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to make the roof out of. I mean, I knew it was going to be wood and I knew it was going to be one of these cool new colours, but I wasn't quite sure about which colour to choose. In the end, I stuck with this kind of lime green. Now, it's something I went back on in the end, in the final build, but for the moment, you see the lime green steps. And I didn't really want this to be a curved kind of roof. I wanted, to, I wanted it to be more of a, like a pyramid. So there wasn't too much variation in how I'd done this. But this is the first roof like this that I've built since I can actually put down steps that connect with each other to make corner steps. So it was definitely very interesting building a roof like this using corner steps, but I didn't use them in all the places. I only used them in a few locations. And you can see Sipsco, Duncan's Castle, and Honeydew Inc. with that nefarious evil Santa with the cigar in the background as we pan around and I finish up the lime roof. Now with the roof done, it was time to dig into the sides of the main castle tower. Now you remember, I made this tower too thick, and what that meant is I can now actually dig into the side of the castle and create this extra level of detail you see here. And this adds to the hourglass impression that we're going to go for with this tower by making the, the, the very middle look like the thinnest parts and having the tops be the thickest parts. I then created these kind of hourglass pillar shapes at the sides of the circle and used stone brick steps to kind of stagger that effect. And then once I had this theme sorted in my head, I came around and replicated it on the other sides of the castles. And again, I wanted the crenellations on this main tower to be very thick. So once, uh, once night fell, I ran around, put down some torches, lit up the roof, and then got back to work decorating the sides of the towers. But I wanted the crenellations on top to be very thick and very heavy. I wanted it to look like a heavily defensible castle because we can add decoration and comfort afterwards. And as you zoom around, that is the roof and the castle structure finished. All the detail is in place for the building itself, and it's got the shape that it's going to end up with, with that kind of hourglass figure at the sides, and those heavily built, heavily set crenellations on top. Again, the lime wood is something that I'll change eventually, but for the time being, it's staying green. And now it's time to think about some trees, some decorations at the front of the island. And then I came around to the entrance, toyed with this a little bit, and added some stone brick steps, so that the Queen has a way to get into her brand new swanky castle. Adding decoration for the door around the entrance of the small tower as well. Next, it was time to think about heraldry. Now, the queen is going to want to show her colours when she's in the castle, like anywhere she goes. So I built these kind of flagpole things at the side that can hold flags, similar to what we did in Let's Build a Castle. And of course, putting that white and red cross flag, St George's flag, there, and mixing it with the Scottish flag, also, that blue, that blue cross, to accompany it. Then I built this makeshift shield above the entrance at the top. Now, I wasn't sure about this. I wanted to put the three lions in there, but there wasn't enough detail with the little blocks. In the end, I built the E here, which stands for Elizabeth, but it's something I still wasn't happy with, and I did remove that before the end of the project. And then I also wanted to build for her a kind of hedge statue. So I began to build this lion out of leaves. Unfortunately, again, it wasn't something I was happy with, and in the end I did get rid of it before the final build. Now there's only one step left to build, and that is the docks. I mean, she's going to arrive in style, a massively cool yacht, but that yacht needs a place to dock, 
And so that's what I'm building here. Using this, these lime wood planks and the lime wood logs, I started to build docks for her ship to... Wait a minute. Oh right, of course, yeah. Ridge and Lewis were eager as ever to help out and help me build this royal castle for the Queen, and they thought the best way to do it would be to fly into me several times with biplanes. Anyway, once they made themselves scarce, I finished up the docks with the lime logs, lime fences, and the lime planks. So when her boat arrives, she can dock up here and exit in style and enter her new swanky castle in Yogcraft. Then it was time to think about lighting, because if she arrives at night, she's going to need to be able to see her way into the castle. So I put up these lampposts with these fancy blue lights, because it's a very royal blue there, and blue's a very regal colour. And there you have it. So when the Queen does arrive into the Yogcraft server, she's got a really nice place to stay. We're going to deck this place out with red carpets, the finest upholstery and leather. She's going to have the best furniture any house has ever had. When she arrives in style, for whatever she's going to be doing in Yogcraft here, who knows? Perhaps we'll find out some later date. You see the window there on the second level? And I added a flag on top of the roof as well. That's going to fly her colours when she finally arrives. So I've been Stin, and this has been an extra special edition of Let's Build Inside Yogcraft. Hit like and favourite if you want to see more, especially Let's Builds from Yogcraft. And subscribe. And until next time, take care.